Hello, I'm Eskimo, and I'm here to talk about CorelDRAW. This video is about the boundary command. I'll show some of the places it can be found in the user interface. I'll demonstrate its use, point out some of the aspects of how it works, and demonstrate a couple of VBA macros that can be used to create boundaries in particular ways. On this page, we have two layers. Layer 2 is the active layer. It has no objects in it. Layer 1 contains all the objects that we can see, including this ellipse and this rectangle. This is the property bar that is visible when two graphic objects, or more, are selected. And among other shaping commands is boundary. Create boundary, create a new object that surrounds the selected objects. And that's the object that is created. Note that it was created on the active layer. Note also that its outline and fill, and a number of other characteristics, all come from the default properties for newly created graphic objects in this document. Note also that the original ellipse and rectangle are still where they were when we created the boundary. Another place where that same boundary command can be accessed is under this menu, Object, Shaping, Boundary. It's the same command, and it produces exactly the same result. If we wanted to have that command always available in our workspace, always visible, we could do that by using CorelDRAW's workspace customization, going down to the commands, finding boundary here under the object section, and dragging and dropping it onto that toolbar. And now that's, that's always visible in our workspace. Uh, note that it's grayed out, and it's grayed out because this is one of the buttons that serves as a status indicator of whether it's appropriate to use at any given time based on the selection. So in this case, when these are selected, it's telling you, yes, you can use boundary. But note also that it's enabled when we have a single object selected or this single object selected. And that's because boundary can be used on a single object. Now in that case, the result isn't particularly exciting because it's just a four node curve. We could have accomplished the same thing by duplicating this shape and then converting to curves. However, if we look at something like this, which is a more complex curve with multiple subpaths, and these are openings here and an island here in the middle. As you can see when we take it over this object behind it. Well, boundary can be used to get the boundary and lose all of those internal subpaths. There is another way to create a boundary that offers some additional flexibility compared to the command we've seen so far, and that is to use this docker. This is called shaping in CorelDRAW 2018 and earlier versions. In CorelDRAW 2019, that has been renamed to shape. And it has a dropdown with shaping operations that are the same as you'll find on the property bar. However, these have additional options. A checkbox here for place behind selected and a checkbox for leave original object. Recall that when we used our boundary command before, it did not place it behind selected and it did leave the original object. So this setting for the two checkboxes right now represents the flavor of boundary that you get when you use the boundary command. But that's one flavor of four, and the shaping docker allows you to access all four of those. So if we select our 
ellipse and rectangle, place behind selected, don't leave the original object, note where these are in the stacking order, and after we apply it, the newly created boundary curve is at the same location in the stacking order, and the original shapes are no longer there. One example where we might use boundary would be something like this artistic text, where we contour it because we want to be able to merge the letters together and have one contiguous outline around the entire shape. Break it apart. I'm going to move it out of the way so it's easier to see. So we've got the outside shape we want all the way around, but we might not want all these internal subpaths. If we place behind selected, that will leave it at the same place in the stacking order. We don't want to leave the original object. Apply it. And we've got our contiguous outline with no internal subpaths. We observed earlier that the boundary command that's available for use from a toolbar or from a menu or a shortcut key is more limited than what boundary can do in the shaping docker. It represents only one flavor, and that's the flavor that is not behind selected and leaving the original object. I think there are a number of situations where it would be useful to be able to create it behind the selected not leave the original object, and still be able to have the convenience of having a one-shot button or shortcut key. So I've written a couple of VBA macros to address that. Both of them create the boundary behind the original. Both of them delete the original. The difference is that one of them can also copy the outline and fill from the original shape before doing the boundary operation. So this is the one that does not carry over the outline and fill. It just creates the contour behind the original and deletes the original, but it has the outline and fill that are the default object properties for newly created objects in the document. The other one does the same thing, except it's copied the outline and the fill before carrying out the boundary command, and then applied those to the boundary that was created. If you are interested in trying those macros, see the description to find a link where you can download the GMS file. That's all I have for this video. I hope you found something useful in it.